Hey everyone, it's Josh, a Vintage Honda Minis, Orlando, Florida. So I'm actually getting to do some work on a CT70. I've had this enormous run of uh, Z50 bikes, but uh, this is my personal CT70 frame that I'm going to build for a new owner. Uh, this is a 1969 CT70. It's actually the silver tag. Uh, I guess the pre-production model has got some differences on it than the later runs. Uh, but as you can see, it's in pretty rough shape but a great candidate for refer, uh, refurbishment. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and do the whole bike. I'm gonna go ahead and just start breaking it down and then I'm actually gonna have the, in Florida, I'll, I call the um, local municipality, police department. Uh, we got a uh, VIN verification form they call it. So I'm gonna have the police run the VIN, uh, make sure that it's clear. I never put a title on this bike, just a bill of sale from the uh, previous owner. Uh, just make sure the VIN's clear. I've already gone up to the DMV. Uh, to check the system and they don't have this VIN in the system so it's gonna as, as long as the VIN comes back okay and the police department is not stolen uh, probably don't have any record of it in their system hopefully uh, then I will be able to just process it and get the owner the title for the bike uh, so this is a look at the other side of the bike uh, like I said it's you know this is for anyone that's not familiar with it this is a pre-production bike uh, what you can easily recognize on a silver tag is a silver uh, decal <clears throat> up at the front. There is no VIN number on it as opposed to a black tag and later models uh, where they have the embossed um, uh, VIN number that matches the frame. Uh, so this is a silver tag model. Alright so I moved the bike from my backyard to my front here on the driveway because I got a little shady overhang and I'm going to start to disassembly here but essentially uh, you know my approach to any of these breakdowns is uh, really just putting it on a small little foot stool like you see. Uh, the engine is kind of the uh, center point of the bike so it, it will stabilize very nicely just on a simple uh, foot stand or a stool and then I'll leave the engine in the frame attached to the engine for last and so I'll just kind of go around and unbolt everything else so uh, I think I'll just start on the front end so we'll get the front uh, forks off uh, and loosen all the parts in the triple tree, drop that out, and then we'll take the back wheel off with the shocks and the swing arm, and then start tackling all the little incidental stuff around the frame. Uh, so like I said, we'll start on the front side, uh, front end here with the forks. And uh, So on this bike, obviously I don't have handlebars on it, but you're gonna wanna get your knobs loosened up. Those can be difficult if they're on there and rusty. Uh, the, can be quite a challenge or you might get lucky and they'll unscrew just uh, easily so once you get those um, handlebars removed this and the cables um, disconnected and such and on this one the buck front headlight bucket and speedometer once that's removed this is kind of where you'll be um, so this right here these special nuts I just use um, this kind of tool here spanner wrench uh, so those will fit into the grooves that are machined on these parts and it make, this makes it easy to remove these if you guys want to do that. Just get yourself a spanner wrench. I'll put a link in the bottom of the video summary where you can find this exact size. So those will break loose. Uh, this uh, chrome nut, the top nut here, you can either do it with a wrench or if you happen to have a socket of this size. This is the right size for that nut. It's one and one eighth inch. These are 14 millimeter um, uh, bolts here for the front fork. Uh, so go ahead and get yourself a 14 millimeter socket for that. And then once that's uh, pretty much removed, you can remove this plate and then you're gonna have one uh, left, uh, one special nut underneath here on the steering stem yoke. And then I'll show you what tool to use to get that off. Now we can get this off and then there's our specialty nut and I got a tool I made for that nut. You can actually use, you know, if you're just going to do one bike and the spanner wrench will work at this point too.
You can just turn that off. Um, but I do have like a tool just because when things come back painted, I try to um, get as much grip on each part that I'm tightening without anything slipping, obviously, to scratch the paint. So I just uh, have a tool that actually goes down off over the stem and it's a socket that I can get to so I don't have any chance of slipping off. Alright, so we're at the point where we can just drop this, this uh, yoke back down through the steering head tube. You're going to have some ball bearings falling. If you're going to reuse those, just make sure you've got your hand down there to catch them. If not, you can get them pretty cheaply in a big pack. Uh, just replace them. Uh, WD-40 does clean those balls, uh, the ball, bear, ball bearings up really nicely. If you got a bunch of oil, just put them in a baggie and spray a bunch of WD-40 in there. And it will get all, all nice and shiny again for you. Uh, so like I said, it, that uh, little footstool works really well. See how the front end is off and you're still going to balance just fine on the engine. Uh, on it as it's cradled on there and then the rear wheels touching so right now uh, It's very balanced and it's not going to be tipsy or anything So I'll just uh, I'm gonna take the key switch off uh, right now uh, this actually has some sort of modified key um, Part here these are Kawasaki this tool again is going to be able to be used at this point too yeah, so you use your spanner wrench if you have this tool. Uh, this is good for unloosening. I did make another tool. Like I said, I, everything, uh, when I do make a tool, it's because I want to reduce any chances of scratching. So I used a deep socket that is a uh, 15 16 inch deep socket. And I milled off some material and left these two nubs uh, that line up with the grooves on the outer ring. So that way I can just put a socket over it. Uh, so since they put a non-OEM key switch in there, they, there's a little nub that usually is sticking out right here to help locate your key switch that they ground off. So I'll just weld a little teeny nub back on to repair it so that the factory key switch has a, has a place to hang on to while you torque it down and tighten it. It doesn't spin on you when you use the key itself. All right, so now we'll work on getting the rear uh, portion broken down, get the swing arm off, the rear shocks, and rim set, and uh, then I'll take the frame off the engine. Up, you got your brake rod that's going to run to your rear uh, brake arm. Uh, get these cotter pins loosened up, and uh, we'll take off the brake arm. And if you had the cable run in here, now's the time to unloosen that and get this auxiliary uh, handbrake um, latch removed or loosened up. on there pretty good so just breaking off some of the surface rust so I can get this foot brake off I have to work on this a little bit later get this uh, this is on there pretty good so I have to get something to wedge in between the frame and there and get it pulled out maybe add some heat and some a uh, little bit of lubricant and see if I can't get it to slip off the shaft um, I'm going to take off the muffler, uh, it's two 10 millimeter bolts at the head stud and then you have a 12 millimeter acorn nut here and then it looks like we got a 12 millimeter nut here at the frame uh, engine mount area. And 
and a 12 millimeter uh, on your acorn nut. I don't know if that's in the picture or not. Yeah, so your acorn nut right here. And then you can fuss. Need a 17 uh, millimeter. Use a deep socket. Uh, all these acorn nuts on the shocks are t uh, 12 millimeters, and you have 12 millimeters at the swing arm uh, bolt, 19 millimeter nut at the axle, and then on the other side of that vintage axle, I just use a punch where I can slide it through the hole and hold it while I uh, uh, reverse off the axle nut. And then you're going to want a 14 millimeter deep socket to get this brake rod nut off. Our top of the shocks, slide this off. You can just kind of reposition the bike a little bit so the motor is taking good center balance of the bike. swing arm bolt out. That's where it's good to have some form of a punch to kind of help push this through. So essentially all we got is a frame with some stuff bolted onto it and it's sitting on this engine. Engine here, uh, which is a 14 millimeter, that's what's going to back off the engine bolt. Uh, get a, another 14 millimeter to hold the head of the bolt on the other side. Same thing for the lower. Uh, disconnect your carb fuel lines, disconnect your um, stator wire to the main harness, and disconnect your um, spark plug. And then you can just go ahead and lift this, this off. Uh, the rest of the parts inside the frame over here, uh, most of the other bolts for the um, battery uh, tray. Um, and any other thing, if you had like a chain guard over uh, bolts, and the uh, bolts are going to hold your um, fenders on, that stuff's all like, that's all 10 millimeter bolts. So there's not really much of any other complicated part to get off of these bikes. Uh, I'll do another video series on refurbishing CT70 wheels, how to take those apart uh, and get them cleaned up. And then I'm also going to keep video in the process of this restoration of this uh, 69 CT70. Uh, name's Josh. Is there any way to get a field officer out to uh, do a VIN verification on an old motorcycle? Yeah, what and it's for what type of motorcycle? Uh, it's a 1969 Honda CT70. Alright, I'll go ahead and put the call in here there right now. I, I am. Alright, I'll go ahead and put it in for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye form this is for you to fill out these areas here the odometer information and then you got to sign it the bottom portion of this form is for the officer to take care of so don't sign anything down here hopefully get good word on it so we got success on the VIN form I know the DMV doesn't have this in the record system so we're good to go get our title recovered on this bike uh, I didn't want to film the officer but he was real cool chatted for a little while about these bikes he all right, so that's gonna to wrap up this portion of my uh, bike breakdown. Uh, I want to end it on a good note with having the uh, VIN going through, uh, not having any issues on it. Uh, but this is a 70 gallon tote. You can uh, get a whole bike in it. It's over at Home Depot. 
So if you guys have any interest in having a box that can put all your bike parts in once you break it down. Uh, guys, please subscribe if you don't. Uh, more videos to come. Uh, I'm going to continue the video on this breakdown of this bike. Thanks for watching.